My guest today is a gent who spent almost 20 years as a tenacious trophy winning midfielder, but found true joy in becoming the kind of manager who lives on a ferocious diet of tactics and match winning film. When he was an assistant at Manchester City during the club's treble winning season, no less an expert than Pep Guardiola predicted that he'd one day become an extraordinary manager in his own right. Last season, he led Leicester City to the top of the championship table and in promotion back to the Premier League before arriving at Stamford Bridge and becoming the seventh Italian to manage at Chelsea. Five of them went on to win major trophies. So it's an honour to say, benvenuto oh, to Enzo Maresca. Thank you. Hello, Raj. Thank you very much. It's a joy to be with you, Enzo. I've got to say, I really look forward to being with you because I love football and chess. <laughs> but you really love football and chess. When you studied at Covaciano, the Italian Football Federation's coaching school, your thesis was entitled Football and Chess. You explained the similarities between the games. You wrote, coaches need to, quote, have the mentality of a chess player. What's playing chess taught you about football? Is football just chess played at lightning speed? No, yeah, as you said, I think there are many things in common, especially Sometimes the way you have to think as a manager, it's very close to the way a chess player has to think. In what way does a manager have to think like uh, a chess player ends up? Even there, you can decide the way you want to play your style. You can be a little bit more defensively, or you can be a little bit more aggressive. But uh, one of the things that uh, I will try to adapt is the way to control the middle of the, you know, the chess table that is very similar sometimes the way we want to control uh, the, 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 the central part of the pitch. And so let's go back to the beginning of your journey. You're from Ponte Cagnano in Italy's southwest coast, the upper ankle on the boot. You're from a family of fishermen, your grandfather, your dad, all your uncles ventured into the Mediterranean to catch anchovies and sardines, but you chose football overfishing. 11 years old, you went to AC Milan's academy, 500 miles from home. And so, in your own words, can you describe what kind of a footballer you were to those who didn't get to see you play? Yeah. Uh, don't ask me the reason why all my family, they are fishermen, and um, I decided to be a football player and then manager, because even today I don't know the reason why. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you said, I left, I left my city when I was 11, and then from there I started my journey. It was a very good experience in that time because it was uh, Milan of Saki. So I was the ball boy in that time, in that Milan. It was fantastic. The great. Gullit, Van Basten, Rijkaard, these kind of players, Baresi, Maldini. I left my family and my city very young, so it's a bit difficult, but then yeah, it was fantastic. What kind of a footballer were you in your prime? Can you describe? Enzo was a... Uh, just love the ball. Just love the ball, so no matter if I was at home, I was at the training pitch or training session, I was always with the ball. I always tried to be learning things. So even when I was 20 or 18 or 22, 24, I was always looking uh, around me. Once again, I was very lucky because when I was 20, I joined Juventus. Sidan, Del Piero, these kind of players, they were there. And sometimes, when you are young, if you are a little bit clever, just watching at this player in simple things, you can learn things. I first saw you when you came to West Brom, aged 18, England second tier then, new culture, new language, crazy accents. And you just walked in, scored a goal and celebrated by flashing that Superman t-shirt that you had on under your jersey. Whose idea was that? And what did that feel like, that moment? I don't remember the reason why, to be honest. You don't? <laughs> Superman. Don't yeah, no, I know that the T-shirt was Superman, but the reason why I wear the, that T-shirt, I don't remember. In that time, I was a long hair, so you can understand how many years ago. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it was, uh, as you said, I was just uh, 18. I joined West Bromwich, but uh, yeah, it was fantastic. What did it feel like in that moment then to, to be in England, a kid, out of your comfort zone, defining yourself, yeah. roaring away, yeah. shirt out, yeah, as hair you said. flowing in the wind? Yeah. <laughs> Depends which part you look, as, as we said at the beginning, you know, you were with the 18 different country. I didn't speak any English words, so it was very difficult because I studied French. As you said, it was different 
completely different culture compared to Italy. So I needed to adapt myself to everything. But uh, at the end, it was very good. 18 months later, you moved back to Italy. As you said, to Juventus. You won a Serie A title. Spent time in Sevilla. Became part of a team that won the Copa del Rey. UEFA Super Cup. Two UEFA Cups. But in 2011, your life changed. You moved to Malaga. Then managed by Manuel Pellegrini. The iconic Chilean Medigliones football leader. Man who's won titles in four countries. And that tactical genius told you, you thought that you could become a good coach yourself. And you said, from that day onwards, I started to think maybe I did have a future as a coach. What do you think Pellegrini saw in you? And, and, and what made him think you could be a good manager? How did that compare with how you thought about yourself? Probably this is a good question for Pellegrini. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What I, what I can say is that uh, Pellegrini has been a big part in my decision to try to be manager. I try to learn things from him, especially the relation that he has with players. That is a fantastic relation because it's very close. Then, uh, in terms also idea of style, I try to to learn things from him, from all the managers that uh, uh, I work with, uh, like him, like uh, Ancelotti, like Lippi, different kind of manager. And at the end, we all try to create our own box and idea. But when he said that to you, had you thought about that, or were you? Was that like me? Um, yeah, yeah. I was uh, like, uh, I was not sure because I was still, I think, twenty-nine or thirty, so still very young. Even if I was already thinking about uh, after when you finish as a player, it was the first one. You retired from playing two thousand seventeen. Just a year later, you were reunited with Pellegrini, the man you called your professional dad. You became his assistant at West Ham. And I'm fascinated because you said you realized that immediately that it felt much better to become a coach than a player. And Enzo, you won league titles. You lifted a pair of Europa League trophies as a player. What was it about coaching that you enjoyed more than being a player? It's a completely different uh, job. Player just uh, most of the time, they think just about themselves. It's about just the session, training session, and then they finish the day. Manager is completely different. You have to think about the training session. You finish the training session. You have to think already about the day after. You have to think how was the training session? How was the behavior of the players? Is next game? 24 hours. Manager. So it's completely different. But I really like to try to help the players to be better players and all together to be better team. August 2020, Manchester City swooped in. Have you managed their elite development squad, the under-23 team? They included then Romeo Lavia and Cole Palmer, now Chelsea players. And your City kids cruised to the club's first ever Premier League 2 title. When you were working with those players four years ago, what did you learn about the skills that separate a great player from a merely good one? They have something in common. Uh, logically, when you our manager uh, with the under 23 players, probably you have to think that the approach has to be a bit different because they are all 20, 19, 21, so different age. Here, it's quite similar because with this kind of age, about 20, 21, 22, the approach with that team and with this team, is more or less similar in terms of, I like to help them to improve. I always said that improving players improve team. So the focus has to be how we can improve players and then it's like something automatic. You can become a better team. What was Cole Palmer like as an 18-year-old? What set him apart as special? Did you see it then? When there is a good player, you can see clear. So you can see with, uh, as you said, Cole, Romeo, we had some more players there that they were very good. But uh, immediately you can realize that uh, they are good players. What was it about him? These kind of players, they do difficult things, become easy. So you can see what for me can be difficult, for you can Impossible. be easy. <laughs> but what's amazing to me is that when you were a young player back in 2000, you told the Italian newspaper La Repubblica that if you had to choose an idol in midfield, you'd pick Barcelona's Pep Guardiola. What year was? That was 2000 you said that. Yeah. And then 20 years later, <laughs> After a short spell at Palmer, you started working directly with Pep, that brain-in-a-bottle coach at Manchester City. 
you became an assistant 2022, you joined the coaching staff, you won the treble. What's the most important lesson that you learned from working at close quarters with Pep? I have to say that I said that many minutes ago because I was playing exactly in the same position. So I mentioned Pep, I mentioned Redondo, that was another good midfielder from Real Madrid, Argentina guy. But uh, yeah, working uh, alongside Pep has been fantastic for two years because even when I was with under 23, I was very close. And then joining the same staff has been fantastic. And you can learn many, many things from Pep, but there is one thing that probably people don't see or they struggle to see that is work harder. It's, it's a beast. He loves to work. The work ethic. Work ethic, exactly. That of a beast. In terms of, he spent many, many hours. Even compared to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's a black belt giving black belt respect. But you and Mikel Arteta both were former assistants. Both will be in charge of Premier League clubs this season. As a manager and a leader, what does Pep do to equip coaches for their own futures? When you are close to Pep or any kind of professional that you think that they are genius, because I think that Pep is a genius, you try to learn as much as you can. As I told you that as a very young player, I was trying to learn every day. So can I? Exactly. I did exactly the same when I was at City. And to be honest, I try to do exactly the same every day. I know he's a big chess fan. He's met with Kasparov and uh, yeah. with Magnus Carlsen. Did you ever I play would like, I would like to meet also. But, uh, <laughs> Did you ever possible. play him? No. No, no. Never played. That one I would pay to see. Pay I can tell you that he's not good enough. <laughs> he loves, but he's not good enough. <laughs> there you go. We can end the interview right there. Last season, you stepped up to lead for the first time in English football in the Championship. Took charge of a Leicester team. They'd just been relegated. Not only that... I think 10 first team players had gone away. James Madison taking his imaginary darts. A local pundit said you inherited a squad that was, quote, a garbage can on fire. But you thought different. You proved different. Where do you start to rebuild a team's confidence and make them believe that they can't only compete, but they can return to the Premier League? What's your first focus to create that change? It's the mentality because the new players, they have to understand that uh, when they join, Leicester, in that case, is to win. And the all the players, they have to reset a little bit because they have to change completely the mindset because from the previous season, it's negative because you relegate, it's negative. So the first focus is try to help the new players to understand that the focus is to win. And the old players try to help them to change the mindset. So how long does it take? I know your methodologies are intense. You stayed at the Leicester training ground for the first two months. For two weeks, you had the players there with you. Kieran Dewsbury Hall, then at Leicester, now with you at Chelsea, said for the first few weeks, players were openly saying they felt a bit stupid as they learned what you wanted and adapted. It took time for them to start to click, in his words. And so it does take time for the players to master your philosophy. How long does it take before they really understand what you want yeah, from them? This is uh, your question, but this is a question that many people or journalists, they do. The problem is that you cannot uh, measure the time that you need, because sometimes the players, uh, they take it early. Sometimes they need a little bit more time. So it's impossible to say one month, two months, three months. The only thing I can say is it's getting better day after day, day after day. And this is the only thing that uh, me as a manager, I'm, I'm focused. On the process. Exactly. And the journey. And that journey ended with promotion. Leicester topped the championship table with a week left, 31 win campaign. You were poised to become a Premier League manager, but then came a pivot. The chance to coach Chelsea arose. When did you learn about the opportunity? How did you process the decision? Did you hesitate at all? No, the decision has been quite uh, easy in terms of I really like the squad. For me, the squad is a very good squad. And then you analyze a little bit the history of the club and it's an uh, it's easy choice. When you joined Leicester, one of the first things you did was speak to some of the senior members. You spoke to Red Bull enthusiast Jamie Vardy, Mark <laughs> Brighton. You got their perspective about the club. At Chelsea, which players did you reach out to? What did you learn? What did they want you to know? 
Uh, since I started the club, I tried to make contact with some of the players. First of all, to try to convince them that uh, the season ahead will be a very good season. Especially when you join a club, you start to do this with the senior players or at least the four or five captains that uh, there are in the, in, the, in the team. Chelsea had an enormous squad last season. It took time for them to forge an identity, but then they only lost one of their last 15 games. They finished six <clears> in the table. You've come in, you've cut that squad down. Can you talk about the process, Enzo, by which you assess what you've inherited and decide on the changes you need to make to make this your team? Most of the people, they just focus in the way we want to play on the ball. But uh, the focus has, has to be in both sides, you know, on the ball and off the ball. So we are trying to change a little bit on the ball because we want to dictate the game eh, and try to play in the opposite side. And off the ball, we try to be very aggressive in terms of eye pressing. And that requires a little bit of time because it's a big change. But uh, as I said, hopefully we can, we can reach that very soon. Managers have a style. You, know, you like the play out the back approach. You've said it takes time for these players to learn. Some of these preseason games have led to you to say, patience, patience, we're on a process here. Have you had to adapt your philosophy to the realities of the squad? Or is it just about them learning what you need them to do at this stage? No, I think uh, for sure you have to analyze and study a little bit the players you have, the squad you have. But the reason why I joined this club, one of the reasons why I joined this club is because I think this squad, they can do exactly what the we are looking for. Can I ask you, we're on the eve of the new Premier League season. He'll be your first as a manager in the top flight. And so what's your greatest fear in this moment? I always said the same. I'm, I'm that kind of manager that I like to think about this afternoon session, tomorrow session. I don't think about uh, uh, in one week, two weeks, in one month, because the only way to try to improve the situation, the squad, the players, is to be focused in today's session, how we can improve players what we can do to help them, what we can do to improve players. And then I think doing this day by day, day by day, day by day, you can reach something important. So by focusing on the task, there's no room for fear? Absolutely. Not in my mind. If you could speak to Chelsea's fan base around the world, can you tell them what are your expectations for this season ahead? What do you think is possible for this team, your team? No, yeah, the target is to try to, as soon as we can, to try to compete with the team that now they are dominating English football, uh, like City, like Arsenal. But also the big difference in this moment between us and them is that, for instance, City are with the same manager eight, nine years. Arsenal are with the same manager already five years. And Chelsea is with the same manager three weeks. So I think for me in this moment, the big difference between us and them is just a matter of time. I'm not saying that we need that kind of years to reach that level, hopefully we can reach that level before, but uh, at the end, require require a bit of time. In your heart of hearts, what success for this season? To see the team improving and to see the team close, as we said, with the team that uh, they are dominating English football. Last question for you. Enzo, I know you're a big reader and I know you've lived a lot of life. Is there a single piece of advice or a quote or something that you've read or been told that kind of captures the moment that you're living here at Chelsea right now? I, I like to enjoy the moment. Everyone, or not everyone, but uh, most people uh, see, for instance, this situation or my situation, like, uh, are you aware of the, I just try to enjoy. So for me, enjoy the moment, enjoy the process, and everything will be fine. May this meeting with me be the low point of your time at Chelsea. There's an Italian proverb that at the end of a game of chess, the, the king and the pawn, they both get put back in the same box. I don't know entirely what that means, we, but we, I kind of love it. We're all back in the same box, my friend. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that is true. Enjoy it while you can. Enzo, thank you, thank you, Raj. Buona thank fortuna. You very much. Grazie. Courage.